Well, I mean, I, I think a low calorie diet is probably a good thing. Um, I, I think in humans, we don't know, there's no data on what a low calorie diet does in terms of diseases and uh, longevity, as I said before. Uh, by analogy to rodents, uh, you would think it would be a good thing. On the other hand, uh, if it made you really miserable to eat 1,000 calories a day, uh, and people who are on that diet tend to be cold, they tend to uh, have very low sex drive, they tend to, uh, in some cases, uh, be irritable. And so if you're not happy, then that gets back to what we were saying earlier. You may be undoing some of the good uh, that that diet uh, would otherwise uh, produce. So my feeling is to live sensibly. I mean, the word, the word of advice that I think uh, is good, it's hard to follow, but I think what everybody should do, if everybody could do this, uh, it, it's the best you can do right now, is decide what is your perfect weight, your body weight. What's perfect for you? And I think what most people do is rifle through the past <laughs> And, and, and decide on you know, when they were most happy uh, with themselves and do everything possible to get to that weight and keep to it. And I think that that would uh, uh, necessarily uh, make you healthier, most people healthier than they are now. Uh, beyond that, I, you know, I take a vitamin supplement, a general supplement. Uh, I take vitamin D. Um, I do not take resveratrol, though a lot of people do. Um, and the reason is I'm waiting for a 100% pure and reliable source of it, and then I will take it. Um, and uh, I drink a little wine, and uh, all the data says, again, there's an optimum. I think the data says that too much wine is bad, but no wine is not optimum. The right amount of wine. Uh, is optimum. There's a center in Louisiana called the Pennington Center that has been uh, doing such studies. It's been a long time since there's been good data on humans on uh, calorie restriction and part of the problem has been that uh, humans tend to cheat on the diet so uh, controlled studies end up not being so controlled. Uh, but recently there have been six-month studies done and what you can do in six months, you can't ask if it's making people live longer, you can't even ask if it's protecting them against diseases, but you can ask if it's eliciting the kinds of physiological changes that you expect in calorie restriction, which would be a loss of body fat, a lowering of blood glucose, so an anti-diabetic uh, effect, uh, a, a rendering of uh, sensitivity to insulin, the action of insulin, these can all be measured. And six months on calorie restriction in humans does roughly the same thing that it does in mice. Now, just one footnote on uh, one of those studies. So, in rodents, uh, what we knew is that uh, some of these sirtuin activators could activate uh, muscle to process glucose better. And it was doing that, at least in part, by activating uh, the synthesis of mitochondria. These are organelles in cells. They're called the powerhouses of cells that make energy for cells. And by activating mitochondria, uh, you sort of drive metabolism and you drive the uptake of glucose from the blood into the muscle and the processing of glucose. So it's a good thing. It's an anti-diabetic thing. And this process is, uh, it can be driven by SIRT1, the survival gene in muscle in rodents. Now, it was done first with resveratrol, but it turns out calorie restriction in rodents does the same thing. You activate the synthesis of mitochondria in muscle, okay, and that makes them more metabolically active, and it's a good thing metabolically. Okay, now to get back to the humans, what they were able to show uh, in this trial is they took uh, punch biopsies of muscle from the people that were on the calorie restriction diet for six months, and what they found in their muscles was an increase in mitochondria, and an increase in the levels of the SIRT1 protein. The protein was actually increased uh, in the muscle in response to calorie restriction. So that says that the congruence between uh, uh, mice and humans may be uh, uh, quite profound.
with regard to calorie restriction. So we can't say any, there's no direct evidence in humans about diseases, certainly not about lifespan, but at least basic physiology uh, uh, looks like it might be similar in humans. So that might uh, make a good prediction about uh, the effects of uh, calorie restriction, but nobody wants to practice calorie restriction because it's, it's so unpleasant. And so what everybody would like is a mimetic, a drug that would el elicit at least some of the benefits of calorie restriction. Mm -hmm.